there's a lot of information out there about atomic bombs or hydrogen bombs or the development of these types of weapons of mass destruction. But we know in history that they have been used uh, at least a couple of times. So here we're going to talk about the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima. In this particular unit, what we're really trying to do is just to get you to understand there's a link between science and history and events of the world as well too and understand the impact that science can have so we can make amazing discoveries about certain things and be able to apply them but they can also have consequences as well too so in the nuclear bombing of hiroshima it's one of the saddest examples of how science has developed helped to develop something that has been used when put in bad situation of war for example so 1945 we know that there were some bombs that were dropped in Nagasaki and Hiroshima so in Hiroshima specifically probably 160,000 people or so died uh, directly as a result of the bombing either immediately or within the first three months as well too so the RERF organization which stands for the radiation effects research foundation it's a joint collaborative effort between the US and Japan so remember US dropped this bomb on Japan during the war and you can look into that and study a little bit about the history the events that were going on around that time so they've been following up on the effects what the possible long-term effects have been incidences of cancer as well too um, lots of radiation has been released as a result of this particular dropping of the bomb it's not just the energy from the impact of the explosion the radioactive isotopes that get dispersed into the environment have likely caused longer problems that have persisted and lasted throughout so leukemia is a type of cancer as well too so most leukemia deaths uh, occurred within the 10 years other cancers still persist 1945 was you know 60 between 60 and 70 years ago so it's been a while now but there still are survivors of the bombing and in Hiroshima there's actually a museum called the Hiroshima Peace Museum if you've never visited before it's a uh, it's something that I think everyone needs to go and visit and take a look at. And it's a real strong kind of emotional experience to go through and watch that. They have documents that talk about the events that are going on. Um, they even have survivors of the bombing as well, too, who are there guiding you through the museum. And it's just quite an emotional experience. So I know a lot of you who live here in Japan have had the opportunity to go visit. If you haven't, I strongly encourage you to check that out. Health of fetuses being monitored. I think I mentioned in the Chernobyl video about this idea that basically young kids, babies, they're the ones who are probably the most susceptible to a lot of the DNA damage because their bodies are still developing, their genes are still being expressed, they haven't gone through puberty yet. There's a lot of potential for problems to happen as a result of being exposed to the radiation. So health of fetuses being monitored. Uh, there are likely to be mutations, but it's difficult to monitor or show statistical significance with a lot of the data there as well too. And unfortunately, this leads to social effects as well too. So stigmatization exists for fear of children with genetic diseases. So I don't have any data to cite on this but it has made it quite difficult i think around that time for people to kind of find this is weird to kind of find life partners people were worried that if i marry this particular person who may have been exposed to this particular type of chemical around that time or the radiation that my kids may have problems in the future therefore i'm not going to marry you type of stuff so difficult to show as well too a lot of anecdotal evidence but that's something that maybe people haven't thought about so much